Welcome to the virtual AU Youth Consultation Series on COVID-19. Uh, we've so far convened 107 youth leaders and the purpose is for this consultation to form a collective response, to address the current crisis, to disseminate timely information, to hear from you on how we could support uh, our government efforts in prevention and in response. This is also a platform to get informed and share experiences as young people, knowing that we're not alone, uh, we're all in this together. Uh, in the African Union, the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention is leading the response on the pandemic, Africa CDC, uh, as you know it, and is, is a specialized technical institution of the African Union, supporting public health initiatives of member states to detect, prevent, control, and respond effectively to disease threats. I'm very grateful for uh, Dr. Justin for being able to join on behalf of Africa CDC. And I really want to say kudos to all the staff and team at Africa CDC on the front line of this crisis under the leadership of the director. Uh, I think we are now faced with visible challenges, which is either denial um, this virus exists and not taken seriously or the other extreme of fear to the point of panic. So there is a communication challenge which needs a lot of trust building and require the collaboration of people to fight the pandemic together and i think that's why we have a role to play as young people as young women we are most placed to engage our peers and to mobilize to influence behavioral change in the community so we can be that bridge to help accelerate response but also put responsibility on youth and by large on citizens I look forward to learning from you and your ideas and how we can unite our efforts and play our part in the solution and in the service of our continent and our communities. Uh, thank you very much. So I'm going to just quickly run you through the presentation on the current preparedness and response activity for Africa CDC. And uh, I'll quickly touch on the COVID-19 situation globally in Africa, and then also Africa CDC role and support. And the key challenges, as, as, you, as you are saying now, we are faced with the visible challenges. So I'll touch some of them in the, in the numbers. Um, this is just a global uh, report. You may not need to, do, to go into details of this, but uh, the key issue here is you see the blue, the first few curve of the blue cases on your right, on your left, it's, uh, it's more cases, the cases that will be reported in China. And then on your right, it's now the current cases that will be reported elsewhere. <clears throat> this is the trend that you've seen. And that's when you see this is a map of the global situation whereby you have um, more dark, is the, the darker the, the country or the, the darker the, the blue is, it means more cases and you still see like we have more pale blue within Africa compared to the rest of the world. This is the same curve I was showing you, the, the yellow one is the China. If you see now the, the current outbreak is still at the, at the peak and it's still uh, inclining, it's still going up. We haven't reached the peak yet, and we're, but it's still inclining. Uh, so this is the same uh, African countries presented and the, the darker the red, the more the cases. So um, moving forward, this is the trend. Uh, we are not sure yet if you are at the peak. We have classification how we classify the outbreaks. We have those with no cases. We have those that have only imported cases and those that have started uh, presenting with the local transmission. But also we have ad another additional classification where you say community transmission. So we know some countries have already started experience community transmission. Community transmission is when you start having cases coming from nowhere within the country and you cannot trace where did they got the infection from. But none of, we only have one country that has already declared that they uh, have community transmission, but most of this, they are trying to put it under local transmission. So as you see, um, majority of cases of, of countries have already started experiencing local transmission, transmission between cases within the country itself. Um, this is, this is a relative comparison. When I say relative comparison, we are looking on number of cases from the first day that a, the continent or the region reported cases. So 
for instance, African, we are around close to 50 days since we reported our first case. But we can see some regions that started reporting case earlier. The trend of African compared to other regions on their first few days of case presentation is still very low. And we, this, this could be a, a true um, observation or could be also the under-reporting based on the ability to test and other related factors. So we also try to compare with the, the, the region that has more cases, which is the European region. And you can see still by, by 45 days, uh, the Europe was more number of cases reported compared to the 45 days of Africa. I'll go now to just the key issue that you as um, as leaders of the um, of this continent that you need to advocate for and I'll just touch on the basic things that and we'll share these slides for your advocacy and for educating other peer groups within your network. So I'll run these slides have been presented in a very simple manner that can be uh, <clears throat> can be uh, quickly used by anyone to, to for advocacy and training around your network. The COVID, as we say, the novel coronavirus is the same family of the viruses we call uh, as what uh, the, uh, they call severe acute respiratory syndrome and Middle East respiratory syndrome uh, coronavirus. These are the two outbreaks that happened um, in 2002 and 2012 respectively. And most of these, uh, the SARS-CoV that happened in 2002 had also uh, a pandemic potential and as well as MERS-CoV that also affected the, the larger part of the Asian region. Um, they call it Corona. Corona is a word that has been derived from a Latin word that means crown. So if you look at the shape of that virus with these uh, small spikes, it makes it makes a shape of a crown, like a queen's crown. That's why they call it coronavirus, like a crown virus. The current one, we still try. The the scientists are trying to do uh, what they call a, a molecular sequencing to determine exactly from which animals was this virus uh, originated from. But currently, they're still. Um, putting on uh, most of the, the, the sequencing that have been done, they're still pointing out from that the virus might, might have been uh, originated from bats. And uh, there are more studies that have been done looking for other possibility of being uh, generated from other animals. It causes respiratory illnesses. When you say respiratory illnesses, is the whole system that is involved in your breathing from the nose, the throat, the, the whole air system down to the lungs. Present with a, any other symptoms like what we usually get from a common cold to some severe symptoms that can really, really uh, lead to pneumonia and the difficulty in breathing. And that can also lead to even death after. So these are the common symptoms. It's fever, it's cough, it's shortness of breath. And symptoms, as we said, can appear between two days to 14 days. So within that time, since when you're infected, you can present with such symptoms. The way it is transmitted so far, based on the evidence that is available, is through the respiratory droplets from an infected person that can either pass, on, pass from one person to another when a person on calves or, or sneeze or it can go to your hands and then you touch to some uh, other um, uh, places or environment around you and contaminate those and somebody else can come and touch that and touch when they touch their their ears uh, eyes or any other surface that has a smooth uh, skin then those virus can now be transmitted to that person the other question that people have been asking is, yes. so is there a vaccine yet? Yeah, no, for now there's no vaccine, but there's a potential of developing vaccines. Some countries have started putting uh, some vaccine trials in place, uh, but now we don't have any approved vaccine for the 
disease. And, and then for the treatment also, or cure, there's no fully evidence based on the treatment, but also same, there are several uh, medicines that are still being on trial and they're trying to see which one is more effective, especially in reducing the, the virus load within your body uh, and the blood. When you come to severity, majority of individual, close to 81%, present with mild symptoms. But you have few, which is around 14%, who are presenting with uh, some severe symptoms, as we say, the, like the difficulty in breathing and pneumonia. And among those around, or 5%, or five among uh, five out of it, of a hundred present with critical symptoms, which is can lead to uh, respiratory failure, failure to to breathe, that may require even being ventilated and being supported to breathe. Uh, you have shock, which is uh, now you have infections uh, circulating into your blood system, and also failure of different organs. Within that, close to 3.4% of people will die. So this is the overall case fatality rate. But this may also be over-exaggerated, as uh, we say, because probably um, most of the, the asymptomatic cases, the cases that don't present with symptoms, are not recorded. So we only record those that present with symptoms, and this might be uh, misleading and may also exaggerate the number. For the older age, we are seeing higher uh, fatality rate or people, more people dying at the older age. As I say, with the general, it's around 3.4%, but for the older age, around 15% dies. For people who are less than, less than 40 years old, the case fatality is very low. It's less than 1%. Uh, <clears throat> so people who are at risk, as, as I've shown from the previous slides, it's more of uh, older adults, but also people who have uh, chronic medical conditions like the heart diseases, lung diseases, diabetic, and cancer, because their immunity is already compromised. So when they get the same, another challenge like this, it's easy to be affected by the virus. But now, um, what as an individual, what should you do to prevent getting infected as we've been advocating? The first is to make sure that you wash your hands. Your hands, especially your palms, are your worst enemy. This is where you touch surfaces where they might be contaminated. And before you wash your hands with soap or any using any alcohol-based wrap, you go and touch your face and you take those virus from those surfaces into your face and then they go into your body. So your hands are your worst enemy, especially your palm. Make sure you take care of them and don't touch your face if you haven't washed your hands or you've touched any stuff and you didn't wash your hands. That's number one. Avoid contact with the sick. Try to, to, to keep a distance, uh, at least uh, one meter. But if you, you do it two meters more, more safer or more, you wear a mask only if you're sick or you're caring for a sick to make sure you prevent that. But also the masks are meant mostly to prevent those who have symptoms from infecting those who are not ill or those who don't have symptoms or those who are not infected, as well as to prevent them from contaminating the surrounding environment. We recommend that masks should be given to those who are present with symptoms. But if you're caring for a sick person, you, all, you need also to cover all other areas, not only masks. You can wear a mask, but also you need to cover your eyes and other places. And for the healthcare workers, who are taking care of the cases, this is the, the general recommendation. When you cough uh, or sneeze, you need to use your, your arm or elbow and uh, make sure if you use your arm before you touch any surfaces, also you, 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 you wash your hands. This is for those who have symptoms and they're trying to prevent others from getting infected. The last six weeks, we had the first cases confirmed in Africa. That was in in February 16. But by, by the time we reached 
the end of February, we had three confirmed cases across the continent. But now by the first week of March, we had already 32 confirmed cases and nine countries involved. Uh, the second week of March, we had around 168 confirmed cases with 24 countries involved in Africa. And as we speak of now, we have now 5,000 confirmed cases and around 48 countries involved. So you can see how this has been evolving quickly. What has been the role of Africa CDC in all these processes? So since the beginning of the outbreak, the Africa CDC uh, director, when, the, when we had the first cases on 23rd of January, he started update, uh, providing uh, update to all the regional collaborating centers on key issues to and action to be taken places, but also on the 7th of January, we activated what we call our emergency operation center and the incident manager was selected to lead the whole process of the response and preparedness. By 20th of January, we had a brief to all the director of the National Public Health Institute on all member states on this COVID and also trying to highlight the key strategic areas and action to be taken and what Africa CDC can provide as a support to ensure preparedness within the country. By 14th of February, we had a Western African region under the ECOWAS ministerial meeting on COVID-19 response where they put the regional strategy. And then that was followed up by uh, an, an emergency ministerial meeting of all the ministers of health in Addis Ababa on the 22nd of February. A continental strategy on prevention uh, and, and prepared, uh, preparedness was launched by the ministers of health with a total budget of close to three. 375 million and it was targeting mostly on prevention transmission preventing death and also preventing social harm due to COVID-19. The, the task force was established to lead on this uh, to lead and, and oversee this continental strategy and uh, within those task for the task force that was was uh, formed and was approved by the ministers of health had several working groups that we are looking on different technical areas, including the surveillance of point of entry and screening for early detection of disease, the clinical care management, infection prevention and control, supply chain and stockpiling, laboratory diagnostic and sub subtyping, and also risk communication. We have done several trainings at the time when the outbreak was in January. We, did, we had no country that could, be, could confirm cases uh, in the continent. So together with other partners, including WHO, uh, we started doing expanding our, our ability to confirm cases of COVID-19. So by early February, we had two countries, uh, Senegal and South Africa, who could confirm the cases. So other countries were sending samples to these countries, and it was taking close to three or four days to even get the results. But by the end of the, uh, uh, as we speak of now, we have 43 plus countries that can be able to, to test and we have distributed more than uh, 12,000 uh, 12, plus kits and also thanks to um, Jack Ma Foundation, they have distributed close to a million test kits across the continent. Same, we've uh, done training on other areas of response surveillance. We have also done on infection prevention controls. And then now we have a clinical uh, care management that will build a, a network of clinicians across the entire uh, entire continent and who we are providing them a webinar to learn on how to manage these cases and at least reduce uh, reduce severe uh, severe illnesses as well prevent death so uh, we're also trying to engage different groups and uh, there's a core group on risk communication that uh, is training and build uh, some um, target communication materials that uh, can be utilized across the continent. And you mentioned about the visible threat that we are facing now. And as of today, we have about the two countries that have full border closures. So these are the issues. 
So even now providing technical support to countries has been a, a challenge because we don't, we don't have any means of sending staff to these countries because of the border closures. We have nine more countries that are implementing international air traffic closures and there are some also preventing the travel restriction and also entry restriction. So you can see like the whole continent, so those who have been uh, staying under the run, uh, close the, to the runway now, the, the, the whole sky is almost silent. We only see cargoes moving and the movement has been significantly restricted. But also we have some economical losses and it's predicted that by the end of this, we have up to two trillion, one to two trillion economical losses globally. And in Africa, it's estimated around 30 billion plus. So, and uh, in light of the increasing community transmission and travel restriction, the continent, there are two key next steps for Africa CDC and AU to take. So key is on now issue of rapid deployment of human resources and materials to member states and then implementation of social distancing measures among the, the countries. So, and we're just trying to share with the, with, without measures, this is where we, the outbreaks mostly, especially for social distancing, this is how the outbreak will look. You have a big outbreak and number of cases coming at once. So you have multiple, uh, we have a big number of cases. And then, but if you implement certain measures like those, you can reduce the, 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 the curve and also prolong it so that you give time for your healthcare system to be adopting to and be able to manage those cases that will present. So I'll now go to some of these slides and we have all these materials on our website. We have several guidance that we've produced that are available on our website. And if you want to, to work on that, and I'll also share these slides for any of you, <coughs> for any of you who want to use them, especially on the last part of the slides to use for advocacy and any other material. And if you need any clarification or additional information, we'll be here and we are ready to support.